right, guys. So welcome back to the second half of Questions for the Coaches with Dead Parent Podcast. Uh, I'm David Radulovich, and uh, I'm going to be walking you through uh, an extended, kind of a little bit more uh, refined version of what Chad brought up in the last half uh, for grid training. It's a little bit of uh, a training drill that I like to do. Um, just to kind of teach myself some self-awareness and refine physical movement, but we're going to keep it very simple today um, and, uh, and just go over nothing about the mechanics, just about what the actual process of the drill is. So the first thing that I like to do is, you know, Chad had talked about picking a certain amount of uh, a certain number and repeating the process that many times on, a, on any bird throughout the course. And then eventually going through a course and doing that with all the targets, then coming back and doing that with pairs. Um, uh, another, taking that kind of a little bit to the next level is another drill that I like to do here, which we're going to do, where essentially I pick the best possible break point or the one that I prefer the most. And I do the repeatability process that Chad was talking about but every time I do it I compress it a little bit more um, you can also start that you can also do this by picking that perfect break point and then stretch it out a little bit more the purpose of it is getting familiar with the act not just getting familiar with the target but getting familiar with the actual movement of the shot making a, a, a faster and faster and faster uh, shot happen at the target, not really thinking about trying to speed up your body or making a slower and slower and slower shot happen at the target, not uh, it, it, making any bad moves. So essentially, long story short, what we're doing here, and I have to add this as a caveat because if you misinterpret what I'm about to show you, it can po potentially cause some bad habits. So essentially, what we're doing here is compressing the movement just learning to take to the shot a specific target in different parts of the line not getting faster in your movement we don't want to be making a, a, a shorter break point happen by flinging the gun with the hands we want to make the break point happen in less time in the line with still having physical control of the gun so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So we're going to shoot this B target here. It's going to be a teal. All right, so we're going to shoot this uh, teal right here. I'm going to start with the break point at the apex, and I'm going to work the break point down. The first initial camera view is going to be kind of like seeing the target and the gun, not so much of me. I am going to have uh, Jason do a video of me really quick just so you can see that I'm not losing control of the gun and trying to swing through, and my hold points and break points, or at least my hold points, are the same. It's very important that we don't do this to practice bad habits of using a lot of hands in our move so we'll go ahead and just go ahead and look at it real quick uh, pull all right so first break point will be up at the tree right there are you ready pull all right just like that so then in terms of the drill we're gonna take that break point we're going to walk it back about five feet. Pull. Up. All right, we're going to walk it back about five feet. We're just going to keep doing this. Never losing control of the shot. Pull. Walk it back five feet. Pull. Walk it back five feet. You're just going to keep going. Pull. And do it one more time. We'll just go till I miss. We'll see how much I can go. Pull. Try one more. When it starts to get very fast like this, essentially what's happening is you're really working on your eyes and your uh, ability to stay calm and relaxed during the shot. That way you're not using hands. The whole purpose of this is not to be fast. The purpose of this is to be relaxed, rely on your eyes, and understand the difference between when you're making the shot happen in different parts of the line and what that feels like in your body. Pull. I don't know how much faster I can go than that. Pull. All 
All right, we'll do one more. Pulp. Okay, so we just worked on taking a shot from the optimal break point down to as fast as you can handle it. Basically, do it this way, and this is why it's very important that I say this again. It's that uh, we, you need to make sure that you're not getting to your level of lack of control. And as soon as you feel like it's more timing based in the shot and total luck that you're hitting it, stop. You wanna just bring it back down to as small of a move as you can while still being able to have control of the gun. The next part of this drill for me is taking that optimal break point again and stretching the move out. So understanding what happens as you break the target later and later and later on during the line. Not every target is worth doing this on. You're not gonna do it on a bird going away or something worth, you know, at the end of the line, the shot is 90 yards away, that's dumb. Very specific drill for targets that you can shoot all the way from the beginning to the end of the line, and this is a great drill to do it on. Now, for me, what I like to do as I'm doing this is I want to just try to pay attention to the difference in how my body feels when I make a move that's very compressed, when I make a move that ends in the middle of the line, versus when I make a move that, that finishes all the way at the end of the shot. The goal here is to just have a level of awareness of paying attention to how you feel and not trying to change or elevate at all how much anxiety or tension that you have in your body. That's the goal of this because we're just trying to focus on learning the same bird in different parts of the line to apply to when you have to shoot them in a pair at a tournament. You don't get a choice to shoot it in your favorite spot or trying to do it while you're focusing on making sure that you have good physical movement. So here we go. First shot's gonna be at the tree, then we're gonna work it down until we're right off the ground. Hopefully I don't miss any. <laughs> Pull. All right, first shot. Now we're gonna do it a little bit later. Pull. All right, so now we'll just walk it a little lower. If you notice my movement, the way that my movement is working is that I'm not starting my gun in a different place as I shoot it later. I'm starting it in the same place, in the same position, and I'm just extending my move. That's the point of this drill. Do it a little bit longer. You can see my gun will go to the same hold point as all the other shots, including the one off the arm. Pull. We'll try to do two more shots before I hit it off the ground. We'll split that in the middle. All right, one more right off the grass. Pull. And just for fun, we'll do one more lower because that was about a foot and a half and I think I can go a few inches. Pull. Oh, I missed it. There we go. So now we're done. <laughs> All right, so basically that's it. It's a pretty simple drill. You do that on any single target, crossing, incoming, tower bird, and you're just getting familiar with different spots. Uh, if you want a more simple version of that uh, and kind of like an intermediary drill between what uh, Chad was showing you and what we just did right now, you can basically take the drill that Chad uh, showed you in the previous video and mine, combine them, pick three spots of the line, one on the way up, one somewhere in transition, and one somewhere on the fall, and do what Chad was talking about where you pick a certain number and you try to repeat the shot at the same break point that many times in the beginning, 
like in the first third in the middle third and then in the last third but don't do it where you're do where you're shooting like you know one on the way up one in the middle then one on the way down then one on the way up one in the middle one on the way down the goal for that type of practice is to have repetition back to back because the way that you can actually the way that neurologically that you learn is you need that comparison to be able to feel and notice the difference so um, very important that you do it that way uh, and have a good combination of quality and quantity at the same time so those are some two two different drills you can do on top of the uh, the normal grid drill uh, if you if you after watching this video and you have any questions uh, or you would like any of my uh, other drills that are uh, much more advanced that actually uh, focus on very specific mechanics and shooting um, you can just visit my website at dredulovich.com um, if you're watching this video, obviously you're on the Dead Pair podcast website or YouTube channel. Um, you're probably a fan of theirs if you're watching it. And if you know any other shooting friends that have not heard of the podcast, send them this video or send them the link to the website uh, and, and help them uh, get involved because there's a lot of really good information uh, that, the, that both Jason and Sean put out. Uh, very helpful to the shooting community and uh, leave a review on their podcast website, send them an email or something. Uh, but thank the guys for doing all this content. They put a lot of hard work into it. Um, and yeah, so thank you guys for watching. See you on the next episode. And uh, if you're looking to get a hold of me, <laughs> no, that's terrible. Because nobody's looking to get a hold of me. <laughs> <But yeah. laughs>